Hello everyone, my name is Sean and I'm here to discuss with you sex and shaming as a result of the bodies that we inhabit. So, uh, basically I want to start off with what expectations are of sex. So, in our society, the people who inhabit it are expected to be a particular sexual behaving person. And that is obviously heterosexual. We're all supposed to be heterosexual and performing sex in the proper way, which is a little bit confusing based off of what we see in media and what is described to us in schools. So I want to kind of give you a hierarchy of what kind of sex is okay and what is not as okay. So of course at the top are heterosexuals. We have the married couples at the very top. Then we have, you know, single or relationship heterosexuals, and they're at, they're kind of at the top of the totem pole, as I like to uh, call them. Uh, followed then by the homosexuals, who have their their own level that is a little bit lower than heterosexuals. It's not as expected or as uh, sexually okay as heterosexuals. It is, of course, becoming more okay, as we can see with the passing of laws for uh, gay people to get married. That's fantastic. We've uh, come very far. But we're still not high on the totem pole. Now, this uh, homosexuals are then followed by the people who kind of transgress against sexual norms. And these are the transgender or transsexual people. These are the sex workers and the porn actors. And even further below them are child molesters, which of course is not ethically okay, uh, which I'm not trying to advocate for, but is of course something that is on the totem pole of sex. And... There are methods at which we're, we're supposed to perform these sex. Even though you're at the, someone can be at the top of the totem pole, they might not necessarily perform it properly. A heterosexual girl, for example, is supposed to perform her sexuality in a way that is pure, but also sexy. Women are, supposed, are expected to both be pure and to be experienced, which... You, you can't really be both. You can't have sex and be a virgin, or you can't have experience with sex and be a virgin. This is this is kind of where uh, we, we get such issues as slut-shaming and victim-blaming. Uh, with, with our concepts of, of female activity and how they're supposed to perform their gender, we say that they're not supposed to be sexually active because... It's their bodies that are at risk. They're supposed to take ownership of their own bodies. And with slut-shaming, we see that our society sees girls and women who perform sex often, consensual sex often, are told to be... Uh, they're described as sluts, negatively. Whereas when men do it, it's they're players, they're performing their sex proper, they're performing their gender properly. And this is an issue, because women should be able to perform their own, their own sexuality in the way that they prefer to do it. And they have ownership of their own bodies. And with victim blaming, that's more in relation to rape, in that uh, when... When we kind of dis when we talk about rape, a lot of the time we see people saying that oh if she didn't wear this kind of dress or oh if she uh, weren't at this skeevy bar or this uh, lowbrow party she wouldn't have gotten raped and that's that's not something that we should that that's not right a woman a woman should not be afraid to be raped in our society. And that's not something that should be accepted. We should be saying when we're 
being a, when we're upset about a rape, we should say, why was it okay for this person to, to do that? Why did they, why did this guy, or I guess if a, if a woman rapes a man, why did this, why did the person who committed the rape do it? That's not okay. As opposed to, well, it was kind of the, the victim's fault. I mean, they had it coming, right? And they don't. That's not how, that's not how our society works. Or that's, that shouldn't be how our society works, rather. That's not how it is in reality. Uh, beyond this, uh, another uh, culturally taboo uh, thing in relation to sex is uh, people who are HIV positive are uh, kind of seen in a particular light. This is more in relation to gay men, and but it does also apply to a large portion of the uh, African-American community. These people are seen as uh, the dirty people who performed sex incorrectly, who uh, are promiscuous. We're asking to get HIV by not performing by not performing sex safely. And what people don't really understand is that this could be once. One sexual encounter can bring about HIV and AIDS. And even if people are performing safely, they can still contract this disease. And even if people choose one day not to perform in these safe or safer ways, it is, it is not a reflection of their person, of how responsible they are, or what kind of person they are. That's, that's not how we should be viewing the character of the person who has HIV or AIDS. They perform sex in the way that they see fit, and it is not something that should be seen negatively by us because, for one, HIV and AIDS is no longer a death sentence. It's something that can be managed, and in the homosexual community, there, there is a, there's a treatment for people who don't want to contract this virus called PrEP, and that's something... Uh, me, as a homosexual, I hear about it all the time. It's something that uh, makes people feel safer to have sex. It is still scary, even though nobody wants to contract HIV. It is, it's not something that should be stigmatized. People are, people are just wanting to have sex, and sometimes they don't have all of the knowledge. They don't have total control over the sexual activity, and that's not something that we should blame them for. They're, they, they are, after all, victims in, in this contraction, and it's not something that they, they, they shouldn't have piled on top of the terror that is surrounded with having HIV, but they also have to worry about explaining it to people and how they're stigmatized as dirty or stupid or all of these negative associations, and that's not right. I also wanted to discuss uh, how we stigmatize the sex worker in the same way as the HIV contractee, and that is that they are... Uh, they perform sex in the way that they feel is okay with them. It's not something that uh, is, is implicated by society's norms. With all of this in mind, I want you to think about sex. I want you to think about how you view sex and about how sex impacts your own life. And, you know, sex should be something that is discussed, something that isn't taboo to share with one another because we fear that we're not performing it correctly. Now, if we were able to open up more about how we perform sex, we might be able to gain more knowledge about how to perform it in safer ways, how to, uh, how to get the desired result 
from sex, how to feel more pleasure, how to uh, not contract particular diseases, how not to spread them, how to properly react when we get them. If we had this open dialogue about sex without fear of being taboo, then it would create a healthier culture that we could all benefit from. So I want you to think about sex in your own life, and I want you to go out there and be proactive. Encourage people to talk about sex in healthy ways and say, hey, it's, it's okay to be who you are. It's okay to express your own feelings. You are who you are. Thank you, everyone. My name is Sean again, and subscribe to this channel. <laughs> Have a good one, everyone.